Hey everybody, it's Triple L here to talk about Kagurabachi. I finally caught up. I've thought about what I think about the series, and we're here to do reviews for it. Hopefully this will become an almost weekly thing. I'm a little bit late in the week because my week is just a little bit busy, but we're here now. So this is the first review. If you know me from the Hero Academia reviews, you know like how I can be. Um, I do want to kind of elevate this and give viewers something more than the standard anime reviewer. Um, it's going to be kind of hard because Kagurabachi is not like Hero Academia in the sense of high text density. Um, it's, you know, I, I'd say it's closer to Bleach. Honestly, I think it's closer to Bleach in terms of the density. Um, if you hear the birds in the background, I apologize. It's daytime when I'm recording this. They're, they're always excited, but hopefully they won't get too crazy today. Anyway, the chapter itself. You know, I think it's a solid chapter. There's not it's a, it's a battle chapter. I, I really can't say too much about it. Let's just say it's a good Kagurabachi chapter. Very violent, um, very interesting little maneuver with getting him in front of the theater and all that kind of stuff. Cool stuff. I will go deeper into one particular topic, that being the one here. But because this is the first video, I want to talk about where I think Kagurabachi is going. One of the interesting things about Kagurabachi, like when I when I sit down to look at this and I'm evaluating it, and I'm looking at, you know, what is like the interesting challenge of Kagurabachi? What, what is it going to be? Um, I have one that I'm actually really excited to talk about. And it's one that like reminds me of the situation in Hero Academia when Izuku showed off 100% with Eri. Because like, it's the spectacle thing. When Izuku showed off 100%, that was when I knew that there had to be something more. Because 100% was like the, it was the trick. But because it's shown in jump, you need to always escalate. And then, you know, we go towards the final and we're, what we're really doing is multiple quirks, right? I don't think that's a spoiler. Like, okay, no, this is a, this is a My Hero Academia review channel. I, I, I apologize if you're somehow like very stuck and very behind, but let's continue. When I look at Kagurabachi, what's really interesting to it, uh, about it to me is that there is a very limited avenue for power escalation. Specifically, the avenue is locked on the swords. Like, the swords are essentially the pinnacle of it. So where can you go beyond the swords? The reason this is important is because if Kagurabachi wants to go beyond 300 chapters, there has to be something beyond the swords. Maybe something with the mineral that makes the swords themselves. But if Kagurabachi is just going to be like a Jujukai, it doesn't need to go that far. Um, and so with the swords as the pinnacle, it's been really interesting. How do we make people who are competent against uh, Chihiro. Well, like, well, how do we bring that in? And so you've already seen it in um, the 50 chapters. People are using uh, fragments. Like, they're using a little trick. I, I forget what it's called. But, you know, they use something to make up the difference, um, to give the mooks something more to do. You have the combination of sorcery and some weird shenanigans. You have the one character. I forget forget their name. I'm, I'm still having uh, memorized names here. But that person. Oops. That person right there, we were introduced to a weapon that could rival the swords to make them relevant, you know? So that's what I'm, I'm really excited about. I kind of want to see how they're going to keep working within a very limited framework of power. You have the sorcery on the side and then you have these equivalents to the swords and these offshoots of the swords. Let's see how much further they go. But already you can see that the author is kind of hitting the walls and has to like make things like offshoots uh, to make up the difference. And in some ways, you know, when you introduce a weapon that is equivalent to a sword, I feel like to some degree you're kind of devaluing the sword, but that's my personal opinion. Um, it's been very cool to see that happen. Honestly, I think that's like doing a Shonen Jump battle Shonen on hard mode. I don't think you should have ha you should have limited your power system so severely uh, because, it, you know, it turns into like a little situation where Chihiro's are just always going through mooks that just happen to be able to slightly contend with him, but he's always cutting them down anyway, and it's just like the one important person and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, I definitely want to see what's going to happen, only because I want to see the author's solution to that particular problem. But okay, that is like probably like the one thing I had to talk about the series future in general. I'm very excited to see where the story goes. I'm glad that it's doing well. I hope that we eventually get to the level of Bonkai's. I want to see Bonkai's or something equivalent. Pretty much where the person brings out their inner world and makes it become real in the real world. Well, you know, once we go there, I know this is going to be a great series. Because, like, look, bro, if you put in, like, a, a Bonkai or domain expansion kind of gimmick into this series, it's going to explode. Everyone loves Bonkai's, all right? But anyway, 
Um, we can talk about something literary. Specifically this part here, where this villain goes out of their way and says, Yo, Chihiro, you and I, we could be friends. And he makes the comment that you, you're the same. Yeah, we're equals. You can call me Hirohiko. Whatever. The reason I'm going to bring this one up is because I have experience with this particular trope. Um, and we can actually talk more about it. And, and you know, now we're like just going to kind of depart away from um, Kagurabachi. Because this is just a general topic. Uh, this is just a general talk about the um, the trope and like you know kind of the implementation in in Kagurabachi. So I think this is a really good thing. I I personally if I'm um, of the theory that every long running story should have at least one of these villains who serves as a mirror to the character. Um, they are the character's darkest self. You know, if you listen to like booktubers, you might like they might eventually talk about this kind of stuff too. They just use probably more sophisticated terms than I will, but I'm a casual, I'm a filthy pleb. Uh, I will use simple terms. Anyway, this is just generally a cool mechanic because in coming into conflict with this kind of person, it exposes more of the hero's characteristics or conversely it could expose more of the villain's characteristics heck if you have a five-way fight and all these guys are kind of the same but just in like slightly different variations of the same thing then you have like five people being exposed whenever they come into clashing it's pretty cool it's a pretty cool mechanic now in manga doing this is very different than how you would do it in a novel and i'm going to be very careful with this and i really do not want anyone being offended on the behalf of a manga author but I feel that most times the manga version of this trope or technique or this gimmick or this character archetype is going to be inferior to one that would appear in a novel. And now that is not the manga author's fault. The reason it's going to be inferior is because this particular thing, I think, does better when you have the t like when you have an entire book to kind of develop it instead of having a character just flat out and go and say it like this kind of line when I write it this usually comes in at the end of a volume and the reason it does that is because ideally like the reader will have spent so much time with the protagonist and the villain throughout the course of a volume that by the time that that line comes up the reader can go back in their heads and look at every single moment and think yeah you know there is a underlying thought here so the thing too is because of the nature of this being a battle shonen that gets updated with um, feedback week to week. Uh, like the most, like if we're talking about writing a book, the, the most comparable format's always going to be the web serial. Well, the popular web serial where you're getting feedback week to week as well, or like chapter by chapter as well. Anyway, um, because Shonen Jump is so much more volatile, they actually can't afford to do the I'm going to develop this over the course of a single volume because they live on a week to week basis. Um, and if if you think about it, right, like when a person buys the book, you get a full volume. You're not like doing what Japan does and you're buying like one week you buy the magazine and you get this one chapter. Right. It's like a fundamentally different product. And uh, novel readers typically are way more patient than manga readers, especially for battle shonen, where they just want that adrenaline hit for the week. Right. So all these factors come in to create a situation where this is a little bit harder to do in a manga. Generally, if you're someone like Horikoshi, you're probably going to be able to do it pretty well. But that's because you're balancing other things. So coming back into this and we're looking at this here. And of course, you know, I have to like always preface this. We're speaking general. Um, there's always a lot of different situations depending on the author's approach on things. Um, but what I want to say is that in Shonen Jump specifically, doing the novel style of the the best application of this type of character would be very, very difficult unless you're like Horikoshi or you have like really good planning or you're very confident that you can keep your popularity up while you get to that point. Uh, doing this in chapter 52, it hasn't even been, uh, I guess we're actually pretty close to a year of uh, Kagurabachi if we haven't already passed it. But doing this in chapter 52, rough. Now, let's go into the next layer of show versus telling. And very quickly, I want to just make sure I say this out loud. Show, um, when someone tells you show, don't tell, and that's all they ever tell you, that's like the worst piece of advice you could ever give. Because there is, show, don't tell doesn't work. You have to tell people sometimes. In this case, 
um, we're being told directly. Now, what is the value of that? Well, telling someone directly just allows you to get to that point where you can just be, you establish the baseline. That's all. You don't, we don't have time to actually see how this guy and Chihiro are the same. And then you get into the layers like, well, okay, this guy's kind of crazy. And like, he's making a very surface level connection. Um, to some degree, you can kind of say like, Kagura Bachi is about surface level connections when it comes to the villains uh, relating to the main character. Like we saw that with the last guy. For a manga author, when you're in like the early stages like this, it actually might be the best thing you can do is to just establish, hey, I think I'm your reflection. Um, and that is by itself, a pretty like a pretty smart move um, because we're already in this state of compromised storytelling where we actually can't rely on the idea that we will have 20 chapters to show off that this guy is Chihiro's um, equivalent. So you just gotta like start it there and get people like front loaded with that information so that they can start building the comparisons as you go forward into the future. It's a slightly different strategy, um, but it's the strategy that actually probably works better for a uh, Shonen Jump series where the author might not be sure they're actually gonna survive for 30 more chapters. And very quickly, going back to um, going back to Hero Academia, like Shigaraki was never really a good mirror of Izuku. The actual proper good mirror of Izuku was gentle. But when you look at that, like gentle you have him so far into the into the series of Hero Academia. Um, and, but if you were to look at Gentle there, you could compare the differences in the implementation. Like Gentle never said that he was the same as Izuku, even though he was. He was the Izuku that failed. He was the Izuku that did not get the slap on the wrist when he ran in to save someone, right? So you can see the difference in implementation there. Anyway, we come back into this situation here. It's going to be interesting to see what he wants to do with this with this relationship because now we like if we were to talk about one note villains like you know like um the, a villain that just shows up for two paragraphs they're just there to be a minor inconvenience in a novel or something like that if you were having like one note villains everything i said doesn't really matter you can have them say like yo you and i are the same it doesn't really matter because it's not going to go anywhere it's just something they say it's like, it's like filler dialogue it's just to make the villain a little bit more compelling like during that little period of time there um i really hope that's not what happens here I think it would be pretty cool if this guy survives this initial conflict so that we can go forward and have him kind of prove to us that he and Chihiro are the same on a deeper level. That would be pretty neat, I think. Um, but yeah, overall, that is my little talk about this archetype of character. In summary, this archetype of character is done very differently in manga compared to novels. And that's largely because of the format of a weekly battle shonen needing constant feedback and a novel when someone buys a novel they get like a full complete story of like over 60,000 words all in one go. Um, and also because of the patience of a novel reader compared to the standard uh, manga reader. Um, oh, on that point too, uh, this, the reason, another reason it's also very, it's easier to do this in novels is because there is more description in general. There's more narrative and prose to like further build this out. Whereas in um, in manga, you're pretty much stuck with dialogue and showcasing actions. Um, you don't ever really get to do a third person perspective of someone's inner state. You don't ever really get a line that says like, um, but thingamajig had a moment of doubt as he stared into the other person's eyes. You don't get that level of introspection, which makes it a little bit harder to kind of express these ideas. Anyway. Going forward in the future, we got to see whether or not this guy's going to stick around to make good on this whole thing about being friends or if he's just going to be an arc villain. I hope he sticks around for a long time just because that would be kind of interesting for Chihiro to have like a good foil on the other side. Um, so very quickly, he also had some pretty interesting paper powers. Ultimately, those powers and the way that he got Chihiro into the into the uh, theater, I thought that was pretty awesome. It was a pretty dynamic fight in that regard. Um, it's cool to see all the little special effects. And, you know, this was pretty much the money shot of the whole chapter right there. Overall, Kagurabachi. Um, I feel like this is more of the same for Kagurabachi when it comes to just general violence. Um, we've, if you've seen it once, you've seen it all the times. Uh, the addition of the powers makes it a little bit more interesting of a visual spectacle. Uh, cool stuff. And uh, yeah, no, I'm interested to see how this goes now because people have seen Chihiro uh, kind of doing crazy things. You also have to start wondering, okay, is there going to be a public reaction kind of aspect? Or are some people going to come in and say like, no, this guy was fighting off a terrorist attack? We'll have to see how they want to spin this one. But yeah, guys, let me know what you thought down below for Kagura Bachi uh, Chapter 52. And uh, until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.